Hi, everybody. I am Malhaz Mizandari, radiologist from Georgia. Uh, today I'll have talk about ultrasound in pelvis interventions. couple of words about the concept of interventional radiology. The key is that radiologists often can see pathology better than surgeon after invasion into the body. So the target is seen. Can we image the instruments at the same time? The answer is yes. So we can perform and monitor biopsies and treatment procedures without any surgical incision. Actually, this is the concept of interventional radiology. Interventional radiology means imaging guidance. Advantages of minimally invasive or low invasive treatment, uh, they have practically no contraindications. Usually, they do not need general anesthesia, no surgical trauma, and might be performed repeatedly. And finally, they are cost-saving and having no or less hospital stay. To overview, if we overview the diagnostic and treatment procedures in pelvis uh, and possible imaging guidance techniques, first of all, we should mention biopsies, which might be performed under ultrasound, CT, and MR guidance. Aspiration procedure also might be performed under ultrasound, CT, or MR guidance. Drainage, ultrasound, combination of ultrasound and fluoroscopy. CT and MR might be used as a guidance technique. Embolization to uterine fibroids, bleeding in cases of uh, neoplasm or trauma are performed under the angiography uh, control using digital subtraction, uh, subtractive angiography. Different ablation techniques like radiofrequency ablation, high intensity focused ultrasound, laser induced thermal treatment or cryoablation also might be performed under ultrasound and CT guidance, in some cases under MR guidance also. Today we focus on ultrasound and ultrasound fluoroscopy guided procedures, non-obstetrical applications. Diagnostic procedures, this is biopsy performed under ultrasound guidance. Treatment procedures, aspiration and rinsing under ultrasound guidance and drainage under ultrasound or combination of ultrasound and fluoroscopy guidance. What kind of approaches we can use? First of all, of course, it's percutaneal approach when we use ultrasound or combined ultrasound fluoroscopy guidance and endocavity, vaginal and rectal approaches when we use, again, ultrasound or combination of ultrasound and fluoroscopy. The most frequent uh, biopsied organ in small pelvis is prostate. Of course, any small pelvis solid mass also may undergo the biopsy under ultrasound guidance. Treatment, the, today we'll have a talk about small pelvis cystic masses. These are tubo ovarian abscesses, post-surgery cystic infected masses like after GYN surgery or rectal or some other type surgery, ovarian, paraovarian cysts, prostatic abscess, and paraproctitis. What kind of low invasive treatment we use? This is aspiration rinsing, which we do to tubo ovarian abscess, ovarian cyst, prostatic abscess, and paraproctitis, and drainages we perform to tubo ovarian abscess and post surgery masses. This is the equipment which we use for those procedures. You see here a very simple C-arm unit. This is operating table, which is, of course, X-ray lucent and can, be move, can move patient from the area of fluoroscopy to area of ultrasound, and of course, ultrasound machine. You see here the transducers. Uh, this one is convex array mm, with needle uh, guidance capability which we use for percutaneal approach and endocavity probe which we use uh, with also with needle guidance capability which we use for 
uh, endorectal or endovaginal interventions. Biopsy devices. This is a uh, Frenzen needle. You see here this needle with internal cannula, and this is the uh, needle without the internal uh, stilet, I'm sorry. Uh, you see here the cutting edges of this needle. So when you deploy it into the mm, target, you move it back and forth and around its axis. Same time, uh, using the syringe, constant uh, negative pressure is applied sucking the material into the needle. So it's cutting aspiration device. This is the biopsy gun. You see here it's uh, inner needle and outer cannula which cuts the tissue sample which is seen after you open it. You see uh, here the sample for uh, tissue morphology. This uh, biopsy gun might be you know, different lengths. Needle of this, uh, those guns might be of different lengths and diameter. Uh, depending on the aim of the biopsy. Devices for aspiration and rinsing. You see here a set of the puncture needles of different diameters starting from 22 gauge which is so-called Shiba needle which is which does not require even uh, anesthesia, even local anesthesia, uh, so thin it is. And uh, this is the connecting tube and syringe which, which enables us to aspirate the content of punctured mass. Devices for drainage. This is one step um, device. Uh, as you see, we use pigtail catheters uh, with tip fixation threads, which are very comfortable because they do not re require the fixation to the skin. Especially it's, impossible, it's important when we uh, perform endocavity intervention. Device for um, uh, drainage again using guide wire technique. Mm, uh, we see here the puncture needle. We use usually 18 gauge needle which, ex which accepts um, guide wire of uh, 0 0.038 inch diameter and again finally uh, pigtail catheter with tip fixation thread is located in the target. This is the procedure of the biopsy. This is the prostate. You see the uh, needle tip, uh, tip of the biopsy gun. Biopsy gun fires and you get the tissue sample. In this case, percutaneal, we used the uh, percutaneal approach for ovarian cyst aspiration. It was 87 cc volume uh, symptomatic cyst, which remained during several menstrual, menstrual cycles. You see here 22 ga gauge needle, which is inserted into the cyst, and you can monitor uh, in real time how it, this cyst is aspirated, and finally, it's gone, and after this we can remove the needle. We use percutaneal approach for drainage also. In this case, patient developed the post-surgery infected mass. They, uh, she underwent the hysterectomy, and uh, here you see the puncture needle in the mass. On this image you see uh, opacified uh, opacified cavity. Uh, on this stage we already use uh, fluoroscopy control and guide wire in this cavity. And the uh, process of uh, deployment of the drainage catheter in the mass. Finally pigtail catheter is placed um, in infected mass uh, and uh, we mm, inject the X-ray contrast agent performing fistulography and then re-aspirate it, making sure that uh, drainage is adequate. In this case, you see here the CT image of the patient who developed this uh, cystic mass, air bubble containing cystic mass and the projection of the rectum. It's not the rectum patient underwent the rectal surgery because of uh, uh, rectal carcinoma. So it's uh, infected cystic mass. As you see, it's possible to drain it using CT guidance, but because of, because of presence of a lot of nerves here, it's not safe. So 
uh, we decided to perform to find a more safe approach and when the transducer is placed on the perineum in anal area we immediately sew this mass so we use this approach you see here the needle in the mass mm, uh, then you see here the guide wire this is already under fluoroscopy control you see the needle and guide wire in the mass finally the pigtail catheter is placed uh, in infected mass and the fistulography performed uh, pacifying um, uh, the drained cavity uh, which is uh, pacified unevenly because of presence of uh, debris in this mass Vaginal approach, tubo ovarian abscess, you see how um, 18 gauge needle is inserted into the mass, uh, internal cannula, internal stilet is removed and aspiration started, uh, which uh, enables to wash out this, um, to rinse this uh, mass and aspirate it completely. This is the case when we used vaginal approach for tubo ovarian abscess drainage. This diagnostic uh, MRI shows you in the mid-sagittal diagnostic MRI shows you uh, the uterine fibroid, a bit of empty bladder, this is vagina, this is rectum, and here you see two masses which are were responsible for pelvioperitonitis which uh, patient presented. This is the axial cut of this on this level. Uh, so this is the procedure of per uh, vaginal drainage. You see here the 18 gauge needle. Uh, you see how uh, contrast agent is injected in this uh, viscous fluid uh, creating very nicely demarcated border. Uh, then guide wire is conducted uh, via the needle cannula and we switch to x-ray control seeing this guide wire in opacified cavity you see the process of catheter deployment according the uh, guide wire finally the pigtail catheter is placed there uh, and this big mass was completely aspirated and rinsed but the second the smaller one remained uh, and collapsed. In a week you can see that this is again fibroid, a bit of endometrium, empty bladder. This is the uh, catheter placed in the drained mass and the, as you see there is no, uh, this is smaller mass is also collapsed uh, after the rinsing procedures. Uh, Saline was injected uh, using the catheter, and you see that this mass cannot contain even three, four, five uh, cc's of uh, saline, so it means that positive result was achieved and catheter was, uh, uh, was withdrawn. This is pre and post procedure MR. Rectal approach is used for prostatic abscess. In this case, you see one cc uh, cystic mass in prostate, which was prostatic abscess responsible for uh, very high temperature, was resistant to antibiotic therapy. This is the needle uh, inserted into the mass. Uh, and after the aspiration and rinsing procedure, uh, the patient has immediate relief and does not require further interventions. I'd like to mention, um, to emphasize some uh, advantages of ultrasound when you compare it with the CT guidance. Generally, it's real-time technique, but to be honest, we should mention that today, uh, real-time CT fluoroscopy is also available. Non-invasive, it's no ionizing radiation, patient is, uh, exposed and is not exposed to ionizing radiation. We have needle aiming and guiding capability performing ultrasound uh, guidance. We have Doppler capability, possibility of combination with other modalities. 
and cost saving technique. And one more advantage we had, which I forgot to mention is that we have possibility to get the imaging, imaging and uh, um, the guidance of the procedure in any oblique inlined planes, which is impossible when you perform CT guidance. Ultrasound or CT, when we are talking about the small pelvis area, the most important probably is possibility of endocavity approach. In conclusion, ultrasound guidance using percutaneal and endocavity approaches is the most effective in small pelvis diagnostic and treatment interventions. Low invasive ultrasound guided management of small pelvis cystic masses is effective, safe, and cost saving. Ultrasound guidance should be used as a gold standard for small pelvis interventions. Thank you for your attention.